Many astrophotographers have commented that they struggle with their stars. They come out too powerful, too weak. They may feel bland or overwhelming to an image. And there's been a lot of effort put into trying to figure out the best way to deal with stars. A while back, I accidentally came up with a method of adding stars on top of stars in such a way that it gives them a really beautiful luster and twinkle. I forget what I was trying to do at the time, but I was trying to accomplish something else entirely. I, I think I just wanted to duplicate a star plate to remove an artifact from it in one corner and mouse slipped and hit the color dodge tool and noticed that when it was layered over the star plate below that the stars really looked beautiful and with a little modification, it came out even better. The effect was that the stars had a luster, a quality to them that we might see if we were looking directly at them with the naked eye or through a telescope. I posted a video about that called How to Get Radiant Stars That Don't Overwhelm an Image. And that was based on my initial work with the technique, but like so many things, it evolved over time. I now have the process further improved and streamlined in such a way that it applies well to almost every image. It's very simple to do, and I think we can cover the entire process in under 10 minutes. Let's dive in. So in front of you, you can see an image of the nebula LDN1369. And as you can see, I've already extracted the stars. We have a starless plate on the left and a star plate on the right. There are paid tools and free tools to extract the stars. There's the free star net, and of course there is the paid star exterminator, and there are other tools too. Since I already have star exterminator and it does a great job, I just always use it. If you use the star exterminator, here are a few tips to make the most of it. Always keep your AI set to the highest power. I know if you use the lower powers, processing goes a little faster, but in these days with computers being so fast, it hardly makes any difference. The way I figure it, if I'm going to spend as much as multiple nights imaging the same DSO, I might as well put the time into it to give it the best possible processing. So always keep the Star Exterminator's AI set at the highest level. And you do this by clicking on the select AI box right here and then selecting on Star Exterminator 11.pb. That is the strongest but slowest form of the AI. You'll usually get the best star extermination if you remove the stars before the image has been stretched. But if you must remove the stars after the image has been stretched, remember to click the Unscreen Stars checkbox. Then your star plate should blend more smoothly back into the image. And if you remove the stars before stretching, just leave that box unchecked. Also, I recommend always having the large overlap button checked in the star exterminator. It causes this AI to take a wider look at the area around each star and just gives a smoother transition when it removes the star from that region. It also takes a little more processing time, adds a bit to the process. The documentation on the Star Exterminator warns that keeping the large overlap box checked can cause the Star Exterminator to take as much as three times or more, more time to remove stars. But even then, I rarely ever find that the Star Exterminator needs more than a minute or so to remove stars. So again, same philosophy. If I'm going to spend potentially multiple nights imaging a target, I want to spend a few extra minutes to do the best possible processing on each step of the image development. So now we have a star plate of LDN1369 and also a starless plate. I'm going to pop over now to my layer-based non-destructive photo editor, Affinity Photo, and put the stars back in using the Evolve Stars method so we can get nice, luminous, glowing stars. Stars that really look like the way stars look in a night sky. I'm in my preferred layer-based photo editor, Affinity Photo, and I'm just going to drag the layers in. Start with a starless plate. It appears as the base layer, and then I'm going to drag in the star plate, and it appears as the layer over the base layer. And with the snap tool pressed, you can see it's middle upper right. I'll just drag the star plate in, and it'll snap easily and perfectly into place. Now the next step is we're going to duplicate the star layer. It's easy enough, right click on it and select duplicate. Now I'm going to name the two layers to designate their purposes. In reality, I've done this so much, I don't bother with the naming. I know what these two layers are and where they're supposed to go, but I'm going to designate the lower one as the star screened layer and designate the upper one as the star's color dodge layer. I'll explain what screen and color dodge mean in a moment. We're going to start with the screen layer, so turn off the color dodge layer. Screening just tells the layer to add its information to the layer below. In other words, all the brightness is added to the image below. Now what the star exterminator does is it basically unscreens the stars. It extracts their information from the image and the screen composite mode just puts that information back into the image. To do this, we use one of Affinity Photo's nearly 40 composite modes. In Affinity Photo, they're called blend modes. It's the same thing. Composites or blend modes are just formulae that tell a layer how to add its information to the layer below. Now the stars have been added back in, but their appearance within the image is a bit strong and overwhelming. 
The easiest way to mute that out I find is with the curse tool, and it does a very effective job when used well. So I'll make sure I have the screen star layer selected. That way the curse tool only affects that layer. Or in other words, it will only affect the stars. I'll grab the curve by about mm, one third to one half the way down and drag to the right and move the drag point slowly upwards till I have constricted a considerable amount of the brightness of the brighter stars so that they are not overwhelming. But I don't want to lose the mid-strength and the dim stars either. So that initial curve needs to be modified and I do that by adding another drag point. I'll modify the lower part of the curve so that it forms a shallow slope back toward the lower left. This allows us to selectively dim both the brighter and the dimmer stars to different degrees and also make sure that we don't lose any of the stars and we stay true to the information that was caught on the telescope. We want the stars there. We just don't want them to overwhelm our beautiful nebula. It's sort of our foreground. It's not really foreground, but you know what I mean. It's our center of attention and we don't want the star plate to overwhelm it. Now let's work on our color dodge plate. The first thing I'm going to do is select the upper star plate layer. That's our color dodge layer and turn it on. And when I do, you see that the star plate completely covers over the image. That's because it's on top. Whatever's on top is what shows. Then I'll change that layer to the color dodge composite mode and it will add its information to the layers below in such a way that emphasizes the luster and color of the stars. And that's the magic of the color dodge mode. It's a tricky composite mode to use because it can easily lead to blowing out an image where bright areas become clipped and lost. But used judiciously, it has powerful positive effects on an image. And that is what we're going to take advantage of here. Now, when I turn the color dodge effect on, you probably noticed how powerful its effect was on the star plate. Right now, it's not desirable. It causes the stars to overwhelm the more delicate image of the nebula, in the same way that adding the other star plate with the screen composite mode did. In fact, its effects are more powerful because color dodge will emphasize brights. So we'll temper that in the same way that we did with the screened star plate. Using the exact same methodology, I'll add a curves tool in the color dodge star plate, Grab the curve somewhere in the lower left. I'm not choosy, it'll be anywhere from about a quarter to a halfway up. And then slowly drag the curve to the right and upward with the goal of constricting the brighter stars. When I have the luminance from the brighter stars muted to the point that I want, I'll modify the lower part of the curve so that the dimmer stars are not lost. I want the moderate to dim stars in the image, but I also don't want them to overwhelm the far more delicate structure of the nebula. By making sure the light curve stays above the bottom all the way over to the lower left points of the histogram, I can ensure that all the dimmer stars stay visible while at the same time controlling how much they show up within an image. This looks good. The color dodge plate over the screen star plate gives the stars a bit of colorful, beautiful luster. I feel it's still a bit strong though, so we're going to further temper the effect of the color dodge plates on the screen plate. With the color dodge plate selected, I'll grab the opacity slider right here and slowly drag down the opacity to slightly reduce the impact of the color dodge plate on the star plate, just a little, just so that the color and luster of the color dodge plate is not artificial looking. I don't want it to overwhelm the screen stars either. This is an iterative process. You should check frequently and see if the changes are affecting the image in the way that you feel looks best. That's easily accomplished by turning the color dodge star plate on and off. I can do that by clicking on the white dots beside the layer that makes the layer active or inactive. And this looks to me to be exactly the effect that I'm looking for. The image of LDN1369, a nebulous structure I like to think of as the wizard's tower. With all of its stars contained within the image, but constrained just enough that the delicate structures of this very interesting nebula are not lost. I use this technique on pretty much all of my astrophotography images these days, and I've been very happy with the outcomes. What I especially like is it's easily adjustable to the characteristics of the image. And you can adjust the effects of both the screen layer and the color dodge layer by manipulation of the curves tool, as well as by altering the opacity of the color dodge layer. I hope this is a technique that you find beneficial in your own development of astrophotography. If you have any thoughts, observations, or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And thank you to everybody. 1,100 subscribers in the last 30 days. I'm I'm just floored. Thank you to everybody who participates in this channel and helps make it a community. Several people have asked about starting up a Discord channel and I'll have to figure out how to use Discord. I, I know how to do astrophotography, but in some ways I'm a backwoods guy. I live on this farm and I'm not very technically savvy about that, but I'll look into it and see if I can get that done for you. Wherever you are, have a great day or even better for us astrophotographers, a great night where you can get out there and shoot that sky.